Hello there and welcome to The Bunker. I'm Lloyd Evans and it's time for another voicemail message. This one is from Lilith. Let's listen to what Lilith has to say. Hello Lloyd, um, please call me Lilith. That's not my official name. Um, and apologies for my English is not my first language. I was listening just now to your uh, video about the Prashani talk or meeting and I had to stop it because I started crying a lot. Um, it triggered a bunch of um, feelings and memories. Um, I've been fading for the past three years. I have a brother that has been disfellowshipped for six years and on top of being disfellowshipped he's gay so you can imagine how my family treats him. Everybody, my, my even my extended family, are Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm third gen, third generation, um, and I don't know. Uh, the, just I want to talk to you about love because I don't know how to love anymore. I don't know how to be loved, and I feel like I'm so messed up that this religion. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do to me and to my brother and to so many people? And even now that I'm building a new family with friends, um, it's just, it's just even though I don't know how to love them. And I was just th thinking about that last week because I realized that even the way I'm loving them is still toxic. I'm repeating patterns that I learned in the religion and I was expecting them so much or and sometimes so little just because I was just repeating everything that was that I was uh, programmed uh, into my mind um, so I'd like to ask you please um, if you could share some of your thoughts about love uh, because even I was thinking, oh, no, maybe unconditional love is the answer. But even unconditional love can be can be toxic, because I don't feel like I can still keep loving my family <laughs> if they keep doing what they do to my brother. <laughs> so it's like, what what is love? <laughs> There's so many songs, right? <laughs> So many books, so many po so many poems. Um, how should I love people? How should I experience love? I feel so distressed. And I have this huge, I this huge craving for love in myself, and probably as all of us, right? I just don't know how to deal with that. Um, I guess I'm doing therapy, but <laughs> the process is too slow. And I want to thank you for your videos, for your books, for your interviews, for your activism. I don't know how you're able <laughs> to just be so calm and kind and do this work. Because even um, when I write about it, I write a lot. It's a way that to help me. I I just get so emotional. So, any your work is so grounded. I I deeply appreciate everything you have done for all of us. I don't know if I can keep going. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm from Brazil. I've been in the United States for a couple of years. I miss my country so much, but I don't think I can ever come back. Because of my family. Okay, I'm talking too much. And, okay, thank you so much, Light. Have a great day and uh, enjoy the holidays because now we can celebrate them. And you have a beautiful family, and I'm sure you have awesome friends too. Okay, bye, take care. 
Well, thank you so much, Lilith, for what you've shared. You've shared a lot there, and there's no shame at all in being emotional because sometimes it helps for people to see that this is a real issue. This is causing people real pain. By sharing your pain, hopefully it's done two things. It's given you some kind of catharsis to get that off your chest, to say, I'm experiencing this and it's not okay. And to say that out loud, publicly, and it's also having the knock-on effect, hopefully, of helping viewers to my channel who might be on the fence <laughs> as to whether this is an organisation that they should either join or continue to be a part of. It's helping them to realise the, the real cost of this poisonous ideology on families and relationships. So I really appreciate you sharing this message. You raised some very good points. I think the main thing which you've already said you're pursuing is, um, you know, when anything is causing you serious distress or serious anxiety, therapy is something that you need to pursue. There's only so much that I can do to help as someone who is not a trained therapist, has not had any training whatsoever in psychology. In fact, Diana is more interested <laughs> in psychology and how the brain works than I am. I do have some interest, but it's I can't see myself ever pursuing that professionally. And yet there are people who dedicate their careers to understanding how the mind works and how emotions work. And they have tried and tested means of helping people manage their emotions and be able to get through life despite trauma and despite anxiety. So I understand the process may seem a little slow for you, but stick with it. All I would add is make sure that your therapist um, understands about cults. Not all therapists do, necessarily. Nearly all therapists will have something to say, something meaningful to say on how to deal with feelings of loss and, um, and trauma. But there are varying degrees to which therapists understand cults and <clears throat> the unique situations that people face due to cults. So if your therapist isn't already familiar with for example, the books of Bonnie Zeman, uh, one of which is actually specifically designed to brief therapists on what they need to be aware of. That might be something that you can help your therapist to understand, and that might have a knock-on effect on the way your therapist is able to help you. So yes, with, with all of that out of the way, that heavy caveat that I'm just by no means an expert on on love and relationships and that kind of thing. I'm going to have a crack at answering what you've talked about or what you've described there. And I think, as far as I can understand, there are really two things here. First of all, when you say that you don't know how to love your new friends and your new family, in other words, the community that you've managed to establish now that you're on the outside and you're saying that you you don't know how to love them and you sense that you are reverting to programmed behavior and programmed thought patterns. Well, again, that's where a good therapist is going to help. Second of all, Give yourself time. Don't expect too much of yourself. Depending on how recent your escape from Jehovah's Witnesses has been, it's going to take time for you to um, get rid of that programming. And to an extent, it's going to stay with you. I mean, this stuff was military-grade <laughs> indoctrination that's certainly elements of it have stayed with me. 
Um, it's just a matter of making sure that they stay firmly in their place. I call it in my book J.W. Lloyd, almost like a a persona within me that needs to stay caged <laughs> in the dark recesses of my mind. J.W. Lloyd is always going to be there to some degree. It's about making sure that that side of me isn't impacting my life negatively. And when it comes to the way you're treating or you're behaving towards your new friends and your new family, hopefully they will have at least some understanding of what you've been through and they will be able to be patient with you and understand that sometimes when you react a certain way, it's not necessarily how the authentic you would react, it's how the JW you is reacting. So they need to be patient with you and you need to be patient with yourself. You need to understand that this is a growing process. You need to outgrow this stuff and it's not going to necessarily happen overnight. The other thing you mention is about the toxic relationships is what I've written down in my notes. Um, your parents are shunning you uh, and they're shunning your brother for being gay. And you raise the very good point, which I haven't really touched on before, so I'm, I'm glad that you've raised it. You raise the excellent point of how can I love someone unconditionally when they are treating me like garbage or when they are treating me in a toxic way? And the simple answer is, when we talk about unconditional love, that's not what we're talking about. There is actually no such thing as absolutely unconditional love. When I talk about unconditional love on my channel, I'm talking about loving someone or being able to love someone regardless of ideological differences, insisting that they see the world exactly as you see the world <clears throat> and if they don't see things the way you do you're going to cut them off you're going to shun them that's conditional love especially when we're talking about parents having that attitude towards their children where they should be having a very compelling reason to love their children they have the paternal bond or the maternal bond which I'm familiar with, and I can't imagine ever not loving my children, for some reason cults are able to get parents to stop loving their children on purely ideological grounds. That's conditional love, and that's the con conditional love that I'm talking about when I talk about it on my channel. But when we talk about unconditional love, we're not saying that you should love people who treat you appallingly, who treat you in a toxic way, and who make unfair and unreasonable demands of you, and who are narcissistic towards you. Of course you shouldn't be chasing after their affections. Of course you should try and distance yourself and get out of that situation to the extent you can. That's not shunning, that's self-preservation. That's getting yourself away from people and ideas that can have a negative impact on your mental health. So never feel guilty about cutting out of your life people who are going to make your life miserable, either because they're just shitty people or because their minds are not their own and their behaviour is being dictated for them by an external force, by, by a group that they're involved in. Never feel guilty whatsoever for keeping them at arm's length. That's self-preservation. So again, two components really to your question. I hope I've answered them. All I will say is be patient. Be patient with yourself. I relate to your pain. I'm sure many who've listened to your message will relate to your pain. Just realize 
Lilith. I know that's not your real name, but just realize that you're not alone and that there are literally thousands of us standing side by side with you who, if we could hug you <laughs> and if we could show our affection and solidarity for you, we would do so in an instant. It may feel like you're on your own when you're being shunned and when you're being treated deplorably or when your brother, I mean, goodness knows what he's had to put up with over the years. The way this cult ruins lives, it's just deplorable. But you know what? You can survive it and you will survive it. It's just going to take a bit of time and a bit of work and a lot of patience, but you will make it through. So that's all I have to say. Again, thank you so much for calling through. If you would like to leave a voicemail, like Lilith has left a voicemail, all you need to do is visit speakpipe.com forward slash cedars. If you just want to leave a message without it being played on the channel, please indicate clearly. Otherwise, I will assume you're comfortable with having your message played. But that's all I have to share on this occasion. Please don't forget to subscribe to the Lloyd Evans channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching.